Hi everyone! Welcome to the Book Club Stories by the Sea. My name is Anastasia Szczebet. Today we are going to read this book with you. The title of this book is Frida Kahlo and her Animalitos. It was written by Monica Brown and illustrated by John Hara. From this book we are going to learn about the life of a famous Mexican artist, Frida Kahlo, and her animalitos, or little animals, from Spanish. And we'll learn how they inspired her along her creative way. At the end of the story, I would like you to tell me which small animal or which pet of hers is your favorite and why. Are you ready? Let's read the story. This is the story of a little girl named Frida, who grew up to be one of the most famous painters of all time. Frida was special. This is also the story of two monkeys, a parrot, three dogs, two turkeys, an eagle, a black cat, and a fawn. They were Frida's pets, and they were special too. Frida had a parrot named Bonito. Like her parrot, Frida was colorful. She liked to wear bold shades that celebrated indigenous Mexico and her own heritage. She lived in a house the color of a parrot's bright blue feather, La Casa Azul, where she grew up with her mom, dad and sisters. Frida had a pet fawn named Granizo. Like her fawn, Frida had watchful and beautiful eyes. When Frida closed her eyes, she remembered her life as a little girl. Frida was always with her father, a photographer who taught her to look at the world through curious eyes. Frida and her father would walk to the park to collect bugs to look at under a microscope. Frida's father also taught her how to paint finishing touches on his photographs. Frida loved the small brushes and the beautiful colors. Frida had a cat with black shiny fur, the same color as her long dark hair. Like a cat, Frida was playful, but as a child, Frida couldn't always play. When Frida was six, she got very sick. She was in bed for a long time. But little Frida didn't get sad or bored. Instead, she used her breath to make mist on her window. And then she drew a door with her finger. Frida used her big imagination and curious eyes to walk out the door with a magic friend, a little girl who danced and played like a kitten. Frida was independent, like a cat. Frida's sickness left one of her legs different from the other, and children made fun of her. But this didn't stop Frida from skating and riding bikes and rowing on the lakes of Chapultepec Park so that her leg could get stronger. Frida was not afraid to do things other little girls didn't usually do. She wore overalls and boxed and wrestled. Frida had two spider monkeys Fulang Chang and Caimito del Cayabal. Like her monkeys, Frida could be mischievous, even when she was a teenager. When Frida was 15, she went to a school called the Preparatoria and found a group of friends she loved. Like Frida, her friends were curious to learn all they could Together, they read and studied and argued and sometimes got in trouble. 
wearing matching caps, they rode donkeys through halls of the preparatoria and set off firecrackers. Frida had an eagle named Gertrudis. Like her eagle, Frida's imagination could fly high. When Frida was 18, she was in a terrible accident and once again she had to be in bed for many months. This time Frida didn't create a magic friend. She created art. Frida's mother made her a special easel and hung a mirror over her canopy bed so Frida could paint. Frida used her imagination and curious eyes to do just that. Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? And if those weren't enough pets, Frida had two turkeys and three dogs, Senor Charlotte, Senorita Capolina and Signora Costi. Frida's turkeys were intelligent and sensitive, just like herself. And like Frida, her dogs were warm and loving. When she was lonely or sad, she would wrap her arms around them and they would comfort her. Her Zello dogs were the same breed that ran and hunted with the Aztecs thousands of years ago and a reflection of Frida's heritage of which she was very proud. Frida's dogs had no hair, but their bodies were warm and Frida gave them great big hugs whenever she felt lonely or sad. Frida's animalitos were spirited and entertaining, just like Frida. When her two spider monkeys were being good, Frida would hold them like babies. When they were being mischievous, they would steal socks and fruit and leap through windows so no one could catch them. Her parrot, named Bonito, liked to snuggle under the covers while Frida took naps and would do tricks at the dinner table for pats of butter. Frida's animalitos played all day in the courtyard at La Casa Azul, the bright blue house on Londres Street. Her husband, Diego Rivera, even made the animals a pyramid to climb on so that her pets could roam freely. When Frida painted, her pets would keep her company. And Frida painted all the time, while the birds sang, the dogs barked, and the turkeys danced in the garden. Frida's animals were her children, her friends, and her inspiration. Frida painted when she was sick and hurting. And Frida painted when she was happy. She also painted when Diego was gone and she was sad. But Frida was never really alone at La Casa Azul, the bright blue house on Londres Street. She had her animalitos and herself and she painted both. Frida painted herself with Fulang Chong playing with ribbons. She painted herself with Bonito the parrot and Signor Cholot the dog. She painted her black cat too, peeking over her shoulder. Frida painted herself with all the pets she loved so much, and even butterflies and caterpillars. Her paintings were magic. And today, if you visit La Casa Azul in Coyoacan, just outside of Mexico City, you might hear the sound of a bird or see a black cat jump from the pyramid that sits in the courtyard of the bright blue house on Londres Street, where Frida and her animalitos lived so many years ago. The end.
Well, now that you've listened to the story, which animal did you like most? Okay, I see. Well, I personally loved the parrot because it was so cute and cuddly. Today, I would love to give a shout out to Chloe from Carmel, California. Hi, Chloe. Thank you for reading this story by the sea along with me. If you enjoyed it, remember to like it and of course subscribe not to miss a single favorite story. Bye-bye everyone, see you next time!